Looking for the best card game accessories? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products providing priceless protection. Shop at Ultimate Guard through the link in the description and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Blue Rat Tokens deck featuring Brudeclad as our commander. This 6 mana 4 4 legendary artifact creature says creature tokens we control have haste, and at the beginning of combat on our turn, we get to create a 2 1 blue Frexen Mirror artifact creature token. Then we may choose any token we control. If we do, each author token we control permanently becomes a copy of that token. So let's say we have a bunch of random treasure tokens laying around, then we could decide to turn them all into 2 1 mirror creatures instead to start pressuring the opponent. Now where Brudeclad shines is if we have lots of small tokens initially and then hopefully one very large token so we can turn all our small tokens into a large creature and then immediately close out the game. So I've split up the deck into a few different categories starting with the artifact ramp so we can hopefully cast our Brudeclad in a timely fashion and set up some of our big plays. Then we've got lots of treasure makers, which are both useful at helping us ramp and play Brudeclad, but they also help us generate tokens, which can then synergize with Brudeclad as well. And then we've got even more token makers, usually small creature tokens. This is definitely quantity over quality. And then we get to some of the bigger token makers, which are awesome to combine with the smaller ones, so we can swarm the opponent with some very large tokens instead. So this is quality over quantity, and these include some of my favorite cards, such as the Vile Duplication, which can maybe even make a copy of Brudeclad, so we can start making a ton of Brudeclads turn after turn. There and back again, the saga from The Lord of the Rings also has excellent synergy if we get Smaug, since we can potentially make a whole bunch of copies of the legend, they will get sacrificed leaving behind a ton of treasure tokens, and then we can potentially turn all those treasures into more Smaugs on the following turn, quickly reaching the token limit on Arena, which can then set up some awesome plays as well. And then we get to some of the interaction, some of your typical blue counter spells and red removal spells to try and keep up with the opponent. And then finally we've got our blue miscellaneous section, which includes some individually powerful cards, time warp to take an extra turn, Jingataxi is especially nice at copying some of our artifacts and other non-creature spells, and then a Junkwinder getting a discount with our tokens, and then can also lock down opposing cards if we generate tokens afterwards. So now let's take a deeper dive into our mana acceleration, starting with our typical 2 mana ramp artifacts, Signet, Cold Seal Heart, Guardian Idol, Mindstone, Ornithopter of Paradise as well, and the new Iron Crag. Then at 3 mana there's Midnight Clock, which can eventually refresh our hand. Replicating Ring also has excellent synergy with Brudeclad if we eventually get those replicated Ring tokens, which can then turn into creatures afterwards as well. We've got Skyclave Relic, can also make a bunch of tokens if we kick it, which can work quite well. And then we've got a Worn Power Stone making 2 mana if we untap with it, same with a Firemind Vessel making Colored mana, and then Hedron Archive making 2 colorless right away, and then we've got Solemn finding a land, and Gilded Lotus tapping for 3 right away. Then our Treasure Makers include Treasure Map, which can also draw additional cards with those treasures, we've got Captain Lannery attacking making treasures, and then a Fable making a Shaman token that's similar to our Captain Lannery. Of course doesn't attack right away, but has a lot of author utility helping us draw and discard, and eventually making Reflection of Kiki Jiki, which can also make tokens with the ability. Then we've got our Prismari command, making a treasure token potentially, but can also destroy artifacts, deal damage, or draw and discard. And then both Big Score and Pirate Spillage will make two treasure tokens after discarding and drawing two cards. And then a Goldspan Dragon, of course, awesome with other treasure makers, turning one treasure into two mana. Then we've got the Ancient Copper Dragon, if that ever gets to attack, can also make a whole lot of treasure, which can quickly win us the game. And Spiteful Banditry, a nice sweeper that can also generate treasures if we take out opposing creatures. Then in our small token category, we've got Hard Evidence making a Crab and a Clue. So that's two tokens for one mana. Yotia declares war can start by making an Ornithopter token, but we could also read ahead to chapter two and maybe take out an opposing creature by tapping some of our untapped artifacts. We've got the Iconoclast making 1-1 one, one soldier tokens whenever we cast a non-creature spell. Invasion of Segovia makes two Kraken tokens, and if we ever transform it, we can generate Katus, which can also give us a lot of mana by helping us convoke our non-creature spells. 
Got the Seasoned Pyromancer making elemental tokens if we discard a non-land cards. Can also activate it from the graveyard. And it can also be quite nice if we're empty-handed just to draw two cards. Sahili also makes 1-1 one -one tokens when casting non-creature spells. The minus 2 can also come in handy. And then at the 4 mana Sahili makes a pair of hasty Thopter tokens. And can also draw additional cards with the plus 1 after scrying if we tap an untapped artifact. Tazeret can make a steady stream of Thopter tokens, can also draw additional cards, especially if we already have a lot of artifacts in play. And then Ovika at 7 mana is pretty pricey, but we do get rewarded whenever we cast a non-creature spell, create X, 1-1 one, one, a red Phyrexian Goblin creature tokens, where X is the mana value of that spell, and they also gain haste. And then a Song of Tottentons can also be an awesome finisher, just sink all our mana into it, make lots of rants, and hopefully we've got an even bigger token that we can turn all those rants into. And speaking of bigger tokens, we start with the Chrome Host Sea Shark, which incubates whenever we cast a non-creature spell. And incubate is actually quite synergistic, since we end up with a bunch of plus one plus one counters on our tokens. So even if we turn them into something else, they'll still have those plus one counters that will grow our creatures. Then we've got both Cackling Counterpart and Quasi Duplicate as three mana cards that can copy some of our creatures and make tokens of them. So it doesn't work with our legendaries, but if we have some other large creature or token in play, we can make more of them. Then we've got Urbrask's Forge, which will steadily grow our horror token and then can also be a lot of damage with Brutoclad. We've got the Vile Duplication, which is one of my favorite cards with Brutoclad, as we can make a non legendary copy of it, as we mentioned earlier. Urza's Command makes a Construct token at instant speed, and these are also awesome because the more we have, the bigger they get, so they're quite nice in multiples, and we can also draw cards or make a Power Stone token which will grow the Constructs even more. And then speaking of Constructs, we have the original Karn Sign of Urza, which can make those Construct tokens and can also provide additional Karn advantage. And then we've got the uh, There and Back Again Saga making Smaug, as we mentioned. So this also has awesome synergy and can set up some fun shenanigans. And then there's Shark Typhoon making a large shark token. Can make it end of turn, untap, play Brutoclad, and then all our tokens turn into huge sharks. So that can also close out the game out of nowhere. Then a Worm Coil Engine, just a fine card, especially against aggressive decks. And then if it dies, leaves behind two Worm Tokens. And then those can also potentially be copied. And Kirabas the Sea God making an 8-8 Kraken token with Hexproof is also pretty fun. Can also tap opposing stuff down and steal their best card afterwards. And then in our interaction category, we've got a few counter spells. Wash away as a one mana counter for opposing commanders. We've got negate and counter spell. And then at six mana, there's Sublime Epiphany, which has a lot of different modes, including making a token of one of our creatures. So that's similar to the Quasi Duplicate and Counterpart. Also very nice with Brutoclad. And then we've got more interaction here. Lightning Bolt dealing three. A Braid can destroy an artifact or deal three. Got Cyclonic Rift and Rivers Rebuke as mass bounce spells, also play well with our mana acceleration. Then Chandra can take out opposing creatures, generate mana or card advantage. And then Burn Down the House can be a sweeper or can make a bunch of devil tokens, so both modes are useful. And then Shatter Skull Smashing can also be a land or another mana sink. And then in our miscellaneous section, we've got Time Warp, take an extra turn, especially nice with Brutoclad out or with an active Planeswalker. Then we've got Jinkataxius, which can copy our artifacts we play for the first time each turn, or maybe our instants and sorceries, and then can also help protect Brutoclad by countering opposing removal spells for the first time. And then a Junkwinder, as we mentioned, affinity for tokens, so it gets a discount for each token we have in play, so we can sometimes play it for just a double blue. And then whenever a token enters, we can tap, target a non-land permanent and opponent controls, and it doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. And finally, Seagate Restoration, similar to Smashing, can also be a land or another mana sink. And then our mana base also has a few interesting additions, and those are some of these artifact lands. We've got a Treasure Vault, Darksteel Citadel, and then there's also the Silver Bluff Bridge, which counts as an artifact land. And the reason we're playing these is because they help increase the power and toughness of our Karnstruct tokens from Karn and from Urza's Command, so they actually have quite a bit of utility. And then we've got more token makers here with the Crucible of Defiance, Soaring City can bound stuff, and then we've got kind of the typical mana fixing, Mirex also making additional tokens, and uh, I think that's about it. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Chandra, Hope's Beacon, so red control. And there's a few cards here that I do like in the matchup, Relic and Archive giving us some artifact ramp, even though red can have some artifact removal. 
Uh, Yotia declares war, probably not very useful for us. And River's Rebuke could bounce some artifacts and Chandra, but also not at its best in this matchup, I would say. So, yeah, our hand is good, but not great. Would prefer some treasure makers that draw cards. Those are the types of cards we want in the matchup. So I'll take my mulligan here. Alright, our hand is a little bit better, I would argue. Signet into Archive is more explosive. Although if they deal with a Signet, we're out of blue mana. A replicating Ring could also be effective if the game goes long enough. Opponent's got their own Signet. And a Worm Coil, also quite nice in this matchup. So that might be our plan early on, get a Worm Coil out there as soon as possible. Opponent's looking menacingly at our Arcane Signet. And they're gonna destroy our land. Yeah, land destruction sometimes paired with Chandra as well. If you're ahead of mana and can destroy the opponent's lands, copy it with the ability. That's an easy way to steal a game. So yeah, hopefully they don't destroy another one, so we can get our archive out there. But uh, yeah, opponent's looking at our permanence again. I guess we can still Prismari commands, get the opponent's signet, make a treasure. Not a game I was hoping to play. Town Razor Tyrants, I guess, punishes us for keeping the land, but is worth two life here. Do I want to sacrifice it? No thanks. So go for Archive, and then we can still play Yotia Declares War. And I guess we'll start from chapter 1, make a token. Their opponent will be able to play Chandra next turn if they want to, if they have the land. And then hopefully they can't make mana, cast in a braid, destroy two artifacts, that would be devastating. It's gonna be Mystic's Mastery, get back fire. Destroying Archive makes sense. Alright, so now we want a land to be able to play Worm Coil. A reckless Handling. What does it get? Goes for the One Ring, but randomly discards it. That was a 50-50. Alright, so still don't want to sacrifice here. Uh, land is good. So we can play Worm Coil. And that can help pressure Chandra. And then copying Worm Coil next turn could be a lot of fun. If they destroy it, at least we'll still have the tokens to combine with Brudeclad. This Chandra doesn't exile the creatures with the uh, damage mode and can only deal 5. So we'll happily take 4 damage. I guess we are falling pretty low, so Chandra could potentially finish us off, but uh, we'll get a hidden with Worm Coil most likely. Unless they're holding some instant speed artifact removal. But yeah, there's Chandra. We have to win this fight. And goes for the card advantage, finding Windfall. Alright, so should be able to finish off Chandra here. Still gonna keep my land. And then we can turn this into a 4-4. So quasi duplicates after playing Gilded Lotus. Copy Worm Coil seems like the play. And then next turn Brudeclad. Can make a bunch of worm coil copies, which is going to be quite exciting. Not sure how Mono Red deals with double worm coil engine. Opponent's going to go digging. They're looking at my land, so they've got more land destruction, perhaps. Tectonic rifts, that's fine. 
We've got our artifact mana. And our opponent's in trouble. So I could Prismari command. And then make a treasure with it. And then maybe draw to discard two to try and find a land. And then I would still be able to play Brutal Clan keeping the treasure. And then we would have a total of four worm coil tokens plus the original. Yeah, that sounds fun. So treasure, draw two, discard two. Did find the land, perfect. Play Brutal Clan. And smash. Pretty satisfying, attacking with five worm coils against our mono red opponent. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Tamiyo Field Researcher, capable of ultimating and getting that omniscience effect. Our hand is pretty slow. Don't have a way of pressuring Invasion of Segovia early on. No third land, so let's take a mulligan. This is better. Signets and Worn Power Stone for ramp. Banditry is going to be a nice way to clear the board. And then Counterpart, if we find one of our creatures to copy, can also be quite effective alongside Bruticlad. Might have wanted to get an extra red source for Banditry, but there we go. This does not damage Planeswalkers, it would be a bit too good, I guess. Bones got their own ramp. Karn also an option here. Although if I go for Power Stone next turn we could play our commander already, which is pretty effective. And then we can maybe copy our Karn Struct tokens with the ability and with counterpart. And there's Taimyo. So we'll have a hasty mirror token attacking Taimyo as well. I guess never mind, our opponent's gonna lock down our artifacts. Alright, now we can use Sahili to finish off Taimyo, that works. The multiverse is a paradise of inspiration. What? Like making masterpieces is hard? So now we're pretty far ahead. I get to untap our mana. Got an active planeswalker. And plenty of tokens now to copy with Bruticlad. Informants. Proliferates, that's fine. So they could technically still have a counter for one mana for my commander here, wash away. Potentially a reason to double spell Karn and something else. Start by using Sahili, a land on top. So I'll just tap and one of my Thopters. And then, yeah, we could set up another turn first. Go Sea Shark plus Karn. We don't run into any counter spells. And then Karn for now could plus, and then next turn make a Karn struct. Could have also gone for double Karn struct for maximum tokens, but there's a small chance our opponents playing sweepers. Not super likely when they're running mana creatures as well. Time Warp, take an extra turn. Not the most threatening board to take an extra turn. So, still lets them draw and play an extra land, essentially. And there's Tamiyo. So we'll see what they decide to do this time. Still locking down some of our permanents. Okay. So, still have enough mana for Bruticlad, our opponent is now tapped out of blue mana, so I think it's go time. Just gonna go for maximum damage. Make a Construct. Play Bruticlad. And then make all our tokens into Constructs. And that should be enough.
Just a casual 50 damage going through. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Zimon and Dina. So sacrifice a ramp deck. Our hand's pretty clunky, only two lands, a ramp at three mana. I think this is a mulligan. Well, this isn't much better, but Prismari Command making a treasure, setting up an early gold span might still be good enough. Play our tap the bridge. The artifacts can help contribute towards the token from Karn and Urza's command. So we can either Cold Steel Heart or we can command, make a treasure, take out Jadar, which I think I prefer. And then we'll still set up Goldspan for next turn. Do this now in case they have some sacrifice synergy. They still have the zombie they can sack to Zimon and Dina. But I'm happy if they tap out for it. Okay, gold span it is. And then we can play Cold Steel afterwards. Or keep our treasure, assuming gold span survives. So that it can make more mana to maybe ramp out Jin or set a Brutaclad next turn. Yeah, let's try that instead. And then the dream is to make a large shark token here. We do get another treasure token, but gold span down, sadly. So, in hindsight, playing cold steel might have worked out a little bit better. So their opponent starts activating Zimon and Dina. And they could still have some interaction available. So can go for Jin, could go for Sahili, draw, and then maybe play a Cold Steel Heart. If we draw land, which is what I would be scrying towards, tapping out for Brutal Clan into two open mana is a bit sketchy. So sure, we'll go for Sahili. And then if they want to use Lair of the Hydra to finish off our Planeswalker, that's fine by me. Keep land on top. This plane's beauty is inspiring. And then now we'll play Cold Steel Heart. And name blue. Okay, so. Opponent's got a growth spiral, end of turn. So they can start draining with Zimon and Dina's ability. Passion can also drain us. And Uro, always good. So it looks like we'll get to untap with Sahili at least. And then can start copying our treasure with Brutaclad to make it easier to replay. Or we can protect with Jingataxius. Even a Cura Best of Sea God could be pretty effective. Although it's going to be even better if we already have a Brutaclad going. So yeah, interesting spot. Could use Sahili and hope to find an untapped land. Then I can draw into it. I guess we'll see what's on top first either way. Land, perfect. So we can tap the treasure. And then still play Jinkataxius. Does not copy our enchantments. Copying Brutaclan, which is legendary, also not very helpful. I think I still prefer Jin. Just gonna make it more likely that Brutaclan can stick around. So Zimon and Dina busy draining us here. Pretty big life total discrepancy. And they've got a decent amount of cards in Graveyard, so not too far from escaping Uro. But we do get to untap. Engine protects us from at least one counter spell here. Okay, so start by plussing Sahili. Burn down the house. Could make a lot of 1 1 tokens, which could play well with Brutaclad. Although we eventually want to turn those small tokens into large tokens from Shark Typhoon or Kiorbas the Sea God. 
So maybe it's not quite what I need right now. And then still happy to draw. Ooh, a River's Rebuke. Not actually all that effective right now, but good to have in the back pocket. And then we'll play Bruticlad. We'll get copied by Jin. So I guess that's good if they have a counter spell. I'll still have one copy left over, but with Jin they would need an instant and then a counter spell as well. Is there a benefit to keeping the token over the real Bruticlad? It's not like we can copy the token since it's still legendary. So I think I prefer keeping the real one in case it gets bounced. And then we'll just keep Jin back and turn our mirror into a treasure. Always good to have more mana, less susceptible to removal. Quasi Duplicate also not very effective with our legendaries. But next turn I could make Thopters and then turn all our tokens into Sharks perhaps, or Krakens. And that might be good enough, we'll see. Our opponent is seeing a lot of cards. And a Rex Sage can now destroy our commander, that's too bad. Yep, gets around Jin. So we'll have to wait a few more turns to set up the Kyurabas to Sea God combo. Belladros Witherbloom. Yeah, that's pretty effective too. Opponent can untap all their lanes. And uh, yeah, cast more stuff. Xenicar's Royal. At least River's Rebuke is looking good. Although that would also bounce Rex Age, which can then deal with Bruticlan once again. They could still attack with Lair of the Hydra, but would only be a 4 4, so can't actually finish off Sahili. So we get to take our turn, don't think we're making a 1-1 one, one shark. Alright, so what's our plan? Could minus Sahili make two Thopters, replay Bruticlad, and that's about it. Could also Kyurabas a Sea God, make a large Kraken. Although we might still die to the Flyer and the Drain from Bastion. But yeah, it does feel pretty bad to Rivers Rebuke here. When our opponent can replay Reclamation Sage, so maybe I need to dig towards some removal for Rex Sage. Not that we have a lot of it. Or we can just make a large Shark token. And then next turn go with Sahili minus play Bruticlad. I guess I could minus in the meantime, just have more blockers. Yeah, I guess that's reasonable. And then if we get to untap with that large shark token, we could maybe one hit KO with the opponent with Bruticlad. But uh, yeah, opponent can make an incredibly large Lair of the Hydra using Baladros's ability. So we'll need our blockers. Says so Emoen drains us for three total here. And Deadly Dispute drains some more. So that gets countered by Jin. So that our next spell can resolve. Our opponent's been pretty good about not playing into it, so I'm sure they've got a follow up here. Rex and Rena, that's. An enchantment would resolve regardless. And now untap with Belladros. They probably wanted to float some mana first, but maybe they don't need it. Time warp, take an extra turn. Well, that explains why they got their spell countered by Jin. So now we just gotta hope they run Belladros into our shark token, since otherwise we're certainly dead. Escape Uro, always powerful. Belladros attacks. Three, four, five, six, seven. So we don't have to sack our treasure. Could technically still draw into a counter spell that we can cast. Mm. 
Although we might be at a point where we're gonna die regardless to the Bastion and the Moon's ability. we has got a lot of creatures in play. And our life totals dwindling. With Lareth it would have five attackers. I guess we can chump without killing their creatures. But yeah, it's going to take something pretty special for us to survive this turn. Gitrock monster can play additional lanes. Now Jin's ability is active again during the opponent's second turn. So maybe there's still hope. Opponent animates lair, 6-6. Six, six. And an all-out attack. Opponent reconsiders, going after Sahili. Don't really care about Sahili at this point, so can take out one of their creatures, chump the other, and we might actually want to chump with Jin, strangely enough, because I don't need its ability to copy any of my spells really. I just need as many tokens as possible. Opponent's at 30, so yeah, if we make enough sharks, we should be able to win next turn. Let you down, so replay Brutaclad. And then we could quasi duplicate the shark as well, but that cost me a treasure, so it doesn't really make a difference. So all our tokens are now sharks, attack. And that's just enough to cross the finish line, sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing a Slimefoot and Squee, a reanimator pair. So what do we think of our hands? Guardian Idol can ramp out, burn down the house. This one's a bit lackluster, not having blue mana. How good is ramping out Worm Coil against his deck? Could be okay, but our opponent's going to be reanimating some powerful things as well. So, close call. On the play, maybe this is good enough. Go with a tapped Smashing. Turn to Idle, and hope to find blue mana in the meantime. Turn one to Goose. Seeing mana creatures makes Burnout House a bit more effective. Okay, turn 3 Karn is quite nice, since our opponent's likely to give us lanes, which is what we actually want here. But they could play their commander already. So Karn will be under quite a bit of pressure. Alright, found our blue mana. Still looking at Karn here. Hope to just get a bunch of Karn advantage, and then if it's close to dying, we can put it out of its misery with Burnout House. Canker Bloom could blow up my artifacts, but not for right now. Okay, so yeah, we could minus get Urza's command, or we could plus and probably get another land and then burn down the house. Alright, fine, I'll minus. And then wipe the board. So next turn we can get back on the board with a worm coil if we'd like, or develop our mana with Solemn. Bruticlad also an option. Although Bruticlads could be more effective if we already have some large tokens in play. Okay, Dark Ritual can set up a 6-drop here. It's gonna be the Troll. Alright, not too scary here. And now I'm liking Solemn plus Cyclonic Rifts bounce the Troll. Get another blue source. And let's just bounce it right now. Up 
opponent is going to cycle it. So Slimefoot and Squee is currently in the graveyard, but they don't have any saplings that they can uh, sacrifice to reanimate a creature. And looting, draw and discard. Okay. And a Stitcher Supplier can mill some more. And Shieldred Whispering one, that one's pretty scary. So that's what they'll be trying to reanimate if they get the chance. And unearth on Slimefoot and Squee. Okay, so our opponent's got a Sapperling here. And Slimefoot and Squee, which is not in the graveyard yet. And it needs to be in the graveyard before they can bring it back alongside another creature. So they'll still need to jump through a few hoops to set up their reanimation plan. Although we can make it more difficult by taking out a Sapperling here with Yotia Declares War starting from Chapter 2. And then, if they manage to sack Slimefoot and Squee, they still will be missing that Sapperling to reanimate. And then we could keep up some of our instants, our Urza's Command to make a card struct, end of turn, and then set up Brutaclad next turn instead. So we've got some interesting options here. But I think for starters, start from Chapter 2, tap, I guess our uh, Guardian Idol is fine. And take out the Sapperling. And then we'll pass a turn. So opponent gets a Sapperling. So we'll take three. So our opponent still needs to put Slimefoot and Squee in the graveyard before they can reanimate using the Sapperling. So our plan is going to be to Urza's Command. Crater Hoof, also pretty scary. And let's go for Power Stone and Construct. And then now, a Brutaclad. And then we could still Prismari Command as well. Treasure, deal 2 damage. And turn all our artifacts into constructs. And smash. So our opponent can chump and then still take 18. And then even if they deal with Brutaclant, we still have all these constructs. I guess Calling Ritual would have been pretty effective here at dealing with all our tokens. They might have some classic reanimation effects. But Crater Hoof, not too effective on an empty board. And Shield Roots we can handle. Yep, Blood for Bones. And get back Shield Roots. Can just sacrifice Solemn to the ability. Canker Bloom can destroy another artifact, maybe Brutoclad. Although that we can still replay, and our opponent concedes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Galadriel, a landfall ramp deck typically. And we've got a very promising start. Signets into Archive. Try and get our Copper Dragon in play as soon as possible. And hopefully our opponent doesn't have much in the way of interaction. Opponent's going to have some uh, scry lands to combine with Galadriel, which turns into ramp. For now, a Cosmos Elixir. That's acceptable. And yeah, let's go for Archive. And then next turn we could play our Dragon already. Provisioner plus a land make a treasure. So they could still have a counterspell. Especially leaving the Mystic untapped means a 2-mana counter is somewhat likely. So instead of tapping out for Copper Dragon, maybe we want to ban the tree x equals 2. And then I could still make 
a midnight clock. Or we could start there. Sure. Could also play a command during the opponent's turn. So we don't play into their counter, but kind of need to bait it out at some point. And a Paths of Twinvale. So let's see here. Okay. So it picks up their creature again. Alright, not too bad. Still get our treasure. So may not have been a counterspell after all. And then now is maybe a good time for a Copper Dragon. Zendikar's Royal, opponent's tapped out. And then if we can make a nice batch of uh, treasure tokens, we can turn those all into creatures with Brutoclad. Can still command make a construct, which is also awesome with Brutoclad. Going after Midnight Clock, that's fine. Don't have to command now since we'll get an untapped land here, but I guess it saves me the treasure, so it's still worth it. So yeah, we'll Urza's command now, draw, make a token. Tap Power Stone was also reasonable. Do we want to land? Sure. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, next turn we get to hit him with a Copper Dragon, make a lot of treasure, which will grow the Karnstruct even more. So I'm kind of curious how large we could have made these Karnstructs. Let's say on average we get about 10 treasure tokens. Then we've got 11, 12, 13 tokens with Brutoclad, and then turn them all into Karnstructs. That's going to be a ton of damage. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Davriel which has lots of interesting abilities. And yeah, our hand seems fine. Mindstone plus Fable or turn three Solemn gives us some nice ramp. And that's really what you need in most opening hands in Historic Brawl. Inquisition can take that away. Could also go for Fable. Takes a Mindstone. I guess Tapped Restoration was an option. Small chance we end up casting it. Depends if I draw land next turn. Sign in blood, draw two. Alright, tapped restoration it is. And then hope to play Fable next turn. Discarding counterpart, also good value since it has flashback. And a Necropotence. Alright, so this game has taken a wild turn. Opponent satisfied with two cards for now. So yeah, card advantage is not going to be a limiting factor for the opponent anymore. But they're still limited to how many lands they have in play and how much mana. So we just gotta enact our game plan and hope the opponent dies to their own Necropotence at some point. Crucible making hasty tokens could also help finish off Davriel. If they go for the minus three on our token. It's gonna be a thirst instead. And a Grim Tutor. There's a few two card combos they could try and assemble. There's the uh, five mana enchantments that drain whenever they gain life and vice versa. So that might be what they're going for, not sure. Could be shield root plus a uh, seven mana sorcery, which can also get the job done. But for now, Necropotence is digging. Yeah, wouldn't be too surprised if her opponent got shield root. For now, might want to hang on to cackling counterpart and just ditch a couple of lanes here, Mirex, and let's make it. Island. And then play Solemn for the time being. And they'll set up our Brutoclad next turn. And we also have the flexibility of copying Solemn with Counterpart, which is good value. 
Right, time for Davriel. There's a lot of randomness involved here. So, at the beginning of their upkeep, they lose one life for each creature they control. And then now Davriel has a powerful ability to draw cards. Okay, so we'll finish off Davriel here. Possible they're trying to set up a combo with Davriel. Not quite sure. Could also counterpart copy a reflection of Kiki Jiki, but it feels like we're just gonna run into a sweeper. So better value to copy the solemn. Yep, opponent does have some combo pieces here, Lich's Mastery, Awaken, not cards you would typically play. Ooh, and Cyclonic Rifts could also come in handy. So instead of going for Brutaclad, kind of lacking counterparts, play Cold Steel Hearts. Don't think our opponent's gonna combo kill us. Next turn with 5 mana, I guess Dark Ritual could make it a bit more. And then if we get to keep Reflection plus Solemn, that can provide a lot of advantage as well. Giving us more lands and when Solemn dies, draw a card. So attack Davriel. And hope we don't get combo killed here. Definitely would be a little bit safer to just keep up Cyclonic Rift for two mana. But I'm kind of curious to see what happens next. Mindstone, that's fine. And the rest can take our Rift. So keeping it up would not have helped too much. I don't think we would be bouncing Necropotence. Virtue kills Reflection, that's pretty good. So I don't think they've played the card they've tutored for yet. Feels like they wouldn't have tutored for Duress or Virtue. So their opponent goes digging once again. But now the coast is clear for Brewclad to do some damage. And uh, yeah, had I drawn a land, I would have been able to play Brewclad and Channel Crucible for 3 mana, which would have made a lot of 2-2 two -two tokens for us. I guess for now it's just going to be Brutaclad, Copy, Solemn. And I'll hang on to Crucible. So I'll just pass. With her opponent at 5. The damage from the 1-1 one -one tokens could matter. And there's Shieldred, as expected, but it doesn't actually gain life with Necropotence, since it just puts the cards in hand from Exile, it doesn't actually draw, and it would still be pretty limited in what they can do with 3 life. But wouldn't be surprised if they had some other combo card in hand here to try and kill us next turn, but they're just not gonna get another turn here. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Ramos, a Dragon Engine. Our hand's not bad. Can, uh... Play turn 2 Ornithopter, turn 3 Karn, hopefully. And then Wash Away could be pretty nice at countering their 6 mana commander. And then Song could be our finisher alongside Brutal Clan if we get to untap with it. Opponent keeps up 2 mana. Doesn't bode well for our spell resolving here. So let's go with a Skyclave Relic instead of Karn. And a Dobin's Veto. Alright. Pass it back. And Dragon's Horde resolves. So we still have a turn before they play a Dragon Engine. So for now, Karn could already make a Karn Struct, although I kind of want to hit my land drops with it. So we will plus. And these are both pretty nice. Get access to Lotus. Possible they have some artifact removal for it. So 
So your opponent's got 5 mana for Archangel. Which is pretty effective if it manages to connect. Do have a flying blocker at least. Can play a Lotus if we find a land with Karn. And then still chump the Archangel. And we did get a land. And then we'll have a counterspell for Ramos. Could also chump big score and then still wash away. That's probably the move. Alright, I guess if they play it first, I would be forced to wash away. And then chump. If they go after Karn, then I guess we don't need to chump. Opponent goes face. Chandra doesn't quite answer the Archangel. Okay, so we can always get a land with Karn's minus one, although good chance we find one with the plus one ability, to be fair. Yep. And we get an island. Treasure Vault has a bit of synergy with the constructs. So, could go digging for an answer to the Archangel here. Or we can just try and set up something powerful of our own. And hope they don't have any powerful spells to cheat into play with Archangel. Although that feels a little bit naive. So we could pillage, ditch Chandra. And then we could still big score. A Braid and Power Stone. So had I kept both Chandra and a Braid, we could have dealt with Archangel. Might have been a mistake. Now, could still Brood a Clad. And then copy the treasure, giving us two mana. Or we can just keep developing our mana. And then... Maybe abrade the uh, Dragon's Horde, although with Archangel it doesn't really matter since they can just cast something for free. Yeah, let's just pass. Archangel's pretty enthusiastic to attack. That hits us, and we'll see what they can cheat into play here. Nickel Bolas, that's a good one. Exile two cards. I guess we keep Song to go with Bruda Clan. And an Uro. Opponent passes, still three mana untapped, which is a bit concerning. Karn can also get an invasion of Segovia back, which we could then. Attack with our tokens from Song of Tottentons. Well, that might be just better to go after Nicol Bolas at this point. And then next turn maybe Brutoclad plus Karnstruck to close out the game. Just need to survive another hit from Archangel. Alright, let's go for it. So 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Let's just plus Karn, probably get another land. Counterspell an option. We get a land. So X equals 11. And does it resolve? It does. So we get to swarm Nicol Bolas. Let's send... 10 rats to play around double removal. Yeah, if we dodge a sweeper and resolve Brutoclad with a construct, we should have a pretty powerful board. Archangel for a Timeless Lotus, that's acceptable. And a Siege Rhino, a classic. Okay. Shark Typhoon, also an option now. But let's construct. 
Could have also gotten Counterspell to make absolutely sure this worked out. But uh, yeah, this seems good enough. Everything's a construct. And yeah, let's see how much damage we have here. Pretty good. All right, so we get to see our Brutoclad tokens in action, and the deck certainly is capable of closing out games in stylish fashion, especially with the Construct tokens. Now, overall, the deck may not be the most competitive just because it is still a six mana commander that needs to survive removal spells before it triggers, and then counter spells, of course, can also be pretty tough. So, against the more interactive decks out there, may not be the best commander to choose, but if you're playing against other creature strategies that don't have a ton of interaction, Brutoclad can certainly do some ridiculous things so that'll do it for today's gameplay want to thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day i also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd